I am a Cambodian cinematographer and photographer and today I am going to share with all of you my adventure building a physical store in Phnom Penh city. Now why do may I? Well, let me tell you, with the script that I have written down, there are so much of it because I cannot just impromptu all of it. The reason why I am making this video sharing with all of you about what I've done throughout the past few months on building this uh, restaurant, or should we call it, is because I want to share my experience with all of you, the good, the bad, and also the process along the way. And maybe you can take it as a learning point, or you can also give me advices on whether what I'm doing is correct or incorrect, or whether there would be another path that we could have taken as a team together. But firstly, before we dive deep into the actual process of building the store, let us just address the elephant in the room. How much does it cost to build a store, a physical restaurant? So when myself and my team had started this endeavor, this journey, we have to recognize that we don't have unlimited budget to spend on. So we try our best to minimize the amount of money that we would pour and invest it or invest in this business, which is a Chinese barbecue restaurant. And the total amount is $5,000 around that, which is the initial starting point. It might sound a lot. However, if we compare to other restaurants and design concept, it would cost more than that. It would cost over 10K and even a bit more. But for us, a lot of the things that we were doing with, were within our expertise. So we had to do whatever we can, sacrificing our time in order to minimize the amount of money we would invest inside this business. So yeah, I would say that we did quite a decent job in, in order to make sure that we minimize the amount of expense that we have. And so in this video, I want to share with all of you about my adventures throughout this process of building the store. I'm going to go through the process itself, how long it takes, what I've done, the main key points to share with you, and also the good point uh, regarding the decision we made, and also the bad point. Total, I'm just going to list down the main and significant point to you. Of course, there are tons and tons of decisions, but I cannot highlight all of it, otherwise this video would take hours, and some decisions can be confidential as well. So yeah, hopefully you can learn a thing or two from this video, and if you're and if you see any mistake you can also point them out and we definitely will accept your feedback so let us talk about the process like i said earlier the restaurant is a chinese barbecue restaurant or in chinese we call it xiao gao and so within the process initially we ask ourselves within the team whether we want to go all out doing everything by ourselves meaning that we have to uh, find the the source of a meat we have to find the source of a vegetable and other main aspect in order to start this Chinese barbecue restaurant. But in the end, with the time constraint we have, because in the team, uh, each of us have a startup we are working on, and one of our teammates is also working in a corporate company. So as a team, we came together and decided to start this business, start this endeavor by buying a franchise or having a franchise or starting the business under a franchise. So that is the first initial process. Of course, there are tons and tons of planning that go along the way for us to reach a decision of starting a Chinese barbecue restaurant. But it's just that the ultimate decision is that we decided together to start this business, this endeavor under a franchise. During the building of the store, we agreed that we prioritize in quality, cleanliness, and taste. So we were really strict with what we want with the shop. And along the way, there were tons of constructive discussions as well. And with some arguments here and there, but ultimately that is the reality of doing business. And that is sort of the process that we had along the way. Thirdly, like I said earlier, because we don't have a large amount of budget, each of us are working our butt off in order to generate money for ourselves, sustain ourselves. So with this business, building this business, we have to really analyze our strong point and our weak point. And so as a team, we have come together to agree upon the idea to really minimize on the amount of budget that might be unnecessary, on things that might be unnecessary. And those things can align with the skill, the expertise that we can offer to the store or as a decoration that we can do it by ourselves or we can buy it elsewhere for a cheaper price. And so we have to cut a lot of things in terms of the aspect of, of building the store in order to cut costs. For example, we sacrifice the location for a smaller amount of budget. So because right now with the store having been open, it is not situated in the best location. I would say it is a six out of 10 in terms of doing business. However, we don't just decide on it because we have no backup plans or 
something to compensate. So we discuss upon our strong point and weak point. The weak point is that we don't have a lot of money to invest. So we have to compensate that with our expertise. For example, with the location being in a spot where it is, where it is a 6 out of 10, whereby there are still people going around and there are still traffic around the shop, but it's not the ideal location and it's not that easy for people to find. So after thoroughly analyzing our weak point and also our strong point, we have decided on that location, but instead make sure that our marketing is done decently, our designs, our videos, other aspects in order to attract people to the location is done excellent. Because otherwise people are not going to be attracted and people are not going to be interested in coming to the store. So maybe after hearing the process, that is something that you can look forward to as well. You have to make sure if you really are on tight budget and want to start a business, these kind of analysis are important for you to really weigh in the cost and the benefit. And yeah, that is something that we have made as a decision. Maybe it would have been a lot better to pay the extra thousand for a better location monthly, but it's just that it's very restricting for our budget with the three of us um, as a team. So that is the third important process regarding starting this store, starting this endeavor. And obviously there are so much more to the process. However, the final one that I'm going to mention here is also quite the most important one as well. And that is to make sure the team and each individual inside of it keep the wheel going, keep the wheel turning. For us, with the amount of time constraint we have, if we just sit around and do not decide on anything, this business would not have happened. We would not have this idea. We would not have even laid hand on the building that we have rented, so on and so forth. So in a team, we had to really push each other in order to bring the best out of each other. And that is something that I would say is important and something that I would definitely take on if I, start, if I were to start another project with a team again. So those are the four important processes that I've been through. Obviously, there are a lot more, but to me, those four processes are important. So maybe you can share your thoughts down below as well. Do you think those are important? Or if you start a similar business, uh, what are other processes that uh, people might have to consider? But with the process part done, let us talk about the good and the bad of starting this store. Let us go with the good part first. The good thing about the decision that we made throughout the process of building the store. Well, firstly, I would say that it was quite a decent decision for us to really choose a 6 out of 10 location for cutting costs because we really don't have the amount of budget to, to have an extra thousand and also currently one month into the business it has been doing pretty well with well, people and regular customers coming in because of the marketing that we do or the store they just drove past it and they just go inside it just shows that sometimes bigger doesn't always mean better that's what she said so that is quite a good and a decent decision made by all of us. Second thing that I would say is a good decision was our team decision to start this business under a franchise because man oh man, if we were to really start this entire endeavor thinking that we can do everything from scratch, we would not have opened or been open by now because it takes so much more investment, it takes so much more time and efforts and with the amount of time constraint we have and each of us has our own priority, it would take so much time and I would say starting under a franchise is not the most profitable idea but it is something to keep the gear and the business flowing rather than doing nothing at all. And the third good decision that we have made is the decision to open the Chinese barbecue shop itself because it has a unique taste that a lot of people come and also enjoy and love. And to our shop as well, when we started this endeavor, we have to really look for a good franchise. We want to have a good partnership. We want to ensure the meat quality. We want to ensure the vegetable quality and the overall health and safety of the consumers. And so far, it has been pretty well. We received decent amount of feedback Every time a customer finishes their food, they always, you know, give good feedback. And that really motivates us to push on forward and to really make us believe that the decision to start the Chinese barbecue store is actually a good idea. But of course, just like any other businesses, there are always bad decisions. And just for the store itself, we have not made profit yet. We already prepare for the worst possible case, which could be failure. And we also prepare that for the first few months, we won't be profitable or profiting from the business itself. But that is the risk that we have to take. And speaking of risk and negativity, here are some of the bad decisions that we have made throughout the process of building this business. And firstly, I would start with experience acquisition, meaning that when we started this entire business, a physical store, really hard to do with little to no experience running a restaurant. 
we had to do a lot and lots of research which can waste a lot of time and also with the amount of research we do we still have a lot of missing gap for example we don't know how to handle employees at first but now we're getting better but it takes a lot of time we don't know how to, how to think forward about the thing we might miss the cleanliness the safety those kind of things we have to really do a lot of research and go back and forth a lot in order to reach a decision and myself and myself included i've always been a person dealing with online businesses digital brands and also uh, cinematography and photography so i've never really run a physical store so it's been really mind-boggling to go all around the place to for all of us as a team to gather around and to learn step by step because of the inexperience the greenness uh, within the team and, and yeah that is quite hard for us to really cope up with at first but along the way we learn and that is how we grow as entrepreneurs i guess and the second thing is team commitment which is something that is really important when starting a brand because within a team like i said earlier we all have time constraints myself i work a lot of jobs uh, in terms of freelancing work i also run a digital brand and my teammates, uh, uh, some of them also do something similar to me and one of them is a corporation worker. So we all have limited amount of time. And, and in a team, you know, as human, we tend to feel disappointment, we tend to feel anger, we tend to feel happiness, sorrow. Those kind of emotions would run within us, whether we are a good person or bad person. And the same goes for a team. When a team is not committed enough, we might feel that sadness or we might feel that anger. And so if you guys are starting a business, make sure you discuss a team time commitment specifically because when everyone is committed, that is when the flame turns bright red and that is when we all just keep going and going and having the momentum. But when the team is slacking off, uh, one person, another person will follow, the decision being made will be slow and that sort of lead to a very messy situation. For our team right now, we've been through that. Right now we discuss and, and, and we have to move on to make sure that we keep the team intact. But at the starting point, it was quite messy and there were a lot of pent up emotions that we had to discuss and it might be awkward, but make sure you discuss. And yeah, that is sort of a bad decision that we didn't really discuss on that or touch on that when starting this uh, journey. And that is the second bad point. Obviously there are more good and bad but I'm just going to mention the important one within the video because I want to make it short and concise. And the last one is within the business, we have to be ready to inject the money. You know, when starting this business, I thought that the initial five to six K is the amount we need. However, the more we go on and on with the business, we might not be profitable for the first few months. So we have to inject money. We have to inject money, meaning that we have to pour more investment into the business and for me, as a 23 years old, year old man, not having a lot of capital in my wallet, it's quite a hard thing to do. But it is a must because if I don't do it, the business would fail and we would, lost, uh, we would lose a lot more. And that is why we had to inject and then we had to run. And it correlated to the point, and it also co uh, correlated with the point that, and it also connected to the point that I mentioned earlier, discuss with the team how to move forward. Do not have pent up emotions, do not have arguments. If there are people slacking off, ask them why. If there are people feeling sad, ask them why. And those are the things that I would say would ensure a higher success rate for the business. So, in the end, starting a Chinese barbecue restaurant with a lot of things on my mind, on my plate, is it a good idea or do I feel regretful about starting this business? Well, my decision, my feeling, my emotion is that, with drum roll, I am not regretful of the decision that I made. I mean, if we look deep down, there might be a 5% regret, but we're trying to cover that with talks within the team, with bringing the team spirit back together and agreeing that if we fail, we fail together because as a team, we make a decision together. But I don't really regret on making that decision because with the amount of investment that we made and also the experience we get, it is a worthwhile investment and people and customers also give us good feedback. and that also bring me to think that if I don't know you and you give us good feedback and if we keep it going, it will be good for the restaurants. And yeah, that is all I want to share with all of you. It might be a long video, I'm not sure, and I'll cut it down, but hopefully you learn a, a thing or two about this video. And if you have something to share, don't forget to share with all of us because we really need extra tips. But yeah, that is me, Sam, having a very small restaurant right around St. Public area. If you're in Phnom Penh, don't forget to come around and have some Chinese barbecue. But yeah, have a nice day everyone and I will see you all in the next video. And I promise I will talk about technology. Thank you guys.